Hello, hello, Trisha here. Right, I'm jumping right into this one. Um, I've already sketched this design out. This is my own design, um, but you can you can use any design that you want to whatsoever. Um, you could take one of those mindful drawing designs and trace one of those out, a sort of Zen pictures, anything you fancy. Um, I'm just showing you how you can take a, a simple design and snazz it up. Um, so I've done this on a watercolour paper. Uh, it's just A4 size. I've sketched out with a HB pencil. Uh, not too dark, but dark enough that I'm going to be able to see it. And I've washed all over with water. Lots and lots of water is very sort of wet and slippery on there. And then I'm just putting on um, these com complementary colours. So I'm using, um, I think it's like a Alrisian red. Um, I've mixed up a purple here. Um, got a blue there in the background somewhere. That will come on in a minute. Here it comes, there we go, so uh, a really zingy blue there as well. Um, and I'm just letting all these bleed into that really wet that I made. So just be aware that wherever you put water um, onto your design is pretty much where your watercolour is going to flow. These were little tubes of watercolour I used. Um, so, and I've just put those onto a little tile palette and just um, mix them with water to the right um, consistency. I'm using my brush to sort of splatter around and dropping in um, water as well. I actually want to create some little sort of cauliflowers and things in there if possible so you get a lot of little textures and a little changes of colour across the surface. Dun, dun, dun. A bit more splashing around. I'm just going to try and stick with these colours here. Um, I don't really want to add too much colour so try and keep them uh, complementary and try and keep them along the same part of the colour wheel um, rather than opposites on the colour wheel. There we go. Very nice and wet. Fiddling about now for no real reason. Just use the corner of some kitchen roll there just to lift out those blobs. Um, if you leave those blobs to dry, um, because it's a really thick colour, the, the colour is um, going to sit at the edge um, and you're going to get a much darker line like a, a watermark round. And now, as if by the magic of television, leave it to dry. And here it is, all dry. I'm so clever. Here we go. So I've got some felt-it pens and they're not special felt-it pens. Uh, they're just a set of kids ones. Um, I don't even know where they're from. We have got an awful lot of kids felt-it pens all over the place. Um, I've chosen out the colours already. So you can see I've got pinks and purples and blues there, but I have got a couple of other colours, so uh, orange and green in there as well. Uh, we'll see how much we, we want to incorporate those. So it's really hard to tell, but underneath there, I've still got my drawing. Um, and you can just see on that lighter blue, there's like those little swirls that I put in um, with the pencil there. So I'm just tracing over the top of that and covering those lines up. Um, and that's what I mean earlier, that it doesn't matter if your pencil marks are quite dark, because we're going to cover them over anyway with the coloured pens. Uh, we want everything to be dry, because these are kids' pens, they're water-soluble. Um, 
they're not um, a permanent pen they're um, a water soluble pen so really nice to, you can create washes with them and things like that but we want we don't want to create washes we're just going to work over the top of this wash so that's why we need to put the watercolor down first create all our washes leave it to dry and then work on top with uh, the pelty so I'm going for the orange you can see how when it's over that blue I still get that orange color but it, it's quite dark so do be aware that when you're working over the top with the colored pens whatever color you've got underneath is going to influence the the color that you're working on top with um, so you sometimes they will come out a lot darker um, than you're expecting them to and that's the fun So just work around your design now, bit by bit. I'd like to tell you about the special plan that I had, um, but I kind of just started to go through the pens one at a time, doing different sections in different colors. Uh, seeing which pens worked and which pens didn't. Who'd have thought there wasn't a grand master plan? Try and be careful when you're working like this to turn your work around so you're not leaning too much on the colours you've just put down because um, you will get it all on your hand and uh, smudge it all over the place so you do need to be careful when you're doing this line work to keep it really nice and crisp and nice and sharp You could work over this with a black pen if you wanted to, uh, so you had a much stronger outline so you just had that colour behind and then um, a black liner pen over the top. Uh, if you're interested in doing something a little bit more with the liner pens, um, I have got a, another video which is um, a dream catcher one which is me building up all of those sort of uh, lines and details and everything just with black line pens um, and they're permanent pens so once they're dry I wash over the top and that's a two-part video how exciting um, I've got loads of other videos now uh, on my channel so do um, like and subscribe to my channel um, and you'll see new things coming out but there's there's quite a lot of stuff in there now um, so there's some um, little proper drawing tutorials on there um, and then there's more sort of fun things like this so a bit of a mixture in there for you to have a go at so I've got something, so I've got the design down now, but some of the things that I'm doing here with the little dots is really just trying to embellish around what I've already done. Um, so you can go crazy. I always tell you to go crazy, but what I mean is don't go too crazy. Because <laughs> you, can, you can go a bit bonkers sometimes and then you think, oh, I wish I would stop myself. If you've got some of those Posca pens, um, the acrylic pens, you can work over with those as well and draw with those. You need quite fine tipped ones to do that. Um, 
quite often the Posca pens are really quite chunky um, and uh, that's a bit too much unless you're going to work really big. So you can't quite decide what I'm actually going to do here. Do stop and think about what you're doing. Stop for five minutes, go and get a cup of tea and then come back. Oh, you can see that little hesitation there. Do I really want to do this? I've started, so I need to do some more. could do this in pencil first so you could um, do like little pencil-y swirls dot over with the pen and then just use your rubber once it's all dry and rub all over it to get your pencil lines out do be really careful that anywhere where you're working on the white of the paper that you're actually working quite lightly with the pencil use your HB pencil and use a nice clean rubber to get it all off with it works best that this is nice and crisp a little bit more maybe? Oh, I can't stop myself. Go on. No. Oh. oh. Got another colour pen. Just going to come in here on this, the beak of the hummingbird. And just to bring that out because the, the watercolour under there is quite dark. Um, so I just want to be able to see that shape a little bit better. Go there we go. Oh, stop yourself. Visit my website to find art resources. Follow me on social media, like this video, and subscribe to my channel to see more tutorials.